Hello, I'm Blake Ress, Commissioner of the Indiana High School Athletic Association. Today I'd like to tell you about a friend to the more than 160,000 student athletes in the state of Indiana, Farm Bureau Insurance. In their own low-key way, Farm Bureau Insurance has played a key role in the success of high school athletic programs throughout the state. Since joining the IHSAA as its exclusive corporate partner in 1988, Farm Bureau Insurance has contributed more than $3 million in support of high school student athletes. On behalf of all the member schools of the IHSAA, we would like to take this opportunity to thank Farm Bureau Insurance for its support of our young people. 4A title game has two powerhouse programs in DeKalb and Pike. The Red Devils are no strangers to the finals, making their third straight appearance. Pike won the title in 2001 and were runners-up last year. Red Devils return all of last year's starters and have added a pair of aces in Courtney Lee and Robert Vaden. DeKalb has yet to run the tournament, despite having lost only four games in the last three years. Seniors Alex Cook and Adam Liddell lead the charge for the Barons. DeKalb and Pike, it's the 4A title game coming up next. Sea Sports and Indiana Members Credit Union are proud to present the 2003 Boys State Basketball Championships. The 4A State Championship lying straight ahead, folks. DeKalb and Pike are right here. Craig Wallen with Dave Nicholson. It's going to be a great matchup, David. Well, let's take a look at the key player for the DeKalb Barons. They come in here with a record of 26 and 1. When you talk about the Cal, you have to talk about Adam Liddell, who's already announced for Purdue University next year, averaging about 12 points, eight rebounds, and four assists per ball game. Keys to the game for the Cal, limit Pike second chances. That's a real key. Handle the Pike runs. And intangibles, such as breaking the press. Here's the Pike key player of the game. They've got a lot of keys, but their number one is Robert Baden. He's only a junior, wearing number 24, 13 points, six rebounds. He shoots it at 52% from the field. Keys to win for Pike. D up early. They'll do that. You can bet on it. Aggressive on the offense. And time is running, which means this has been a goal of theirs all year long. Motorcycles of Indianapolis presents our starting lineups with PA announcer Scott Gregg. 14, Caleb Emke. 32, Stuart Ruffner. 40, Robbie Brewer. 44, Will Nan. 50, Adam Cook. And the starting lineup for the Barons of DeKalb. At one forward, a six foot seven inch senior, number four, Adam Liddell. At the other forward, a six foot six inch senior, number 42, Alex Cook. At center, a six foot four inch senior, number 52, Zach Christley. At one guard, a six foot three inch junior, number 22, Michael Knowles. At the other guard, a six foot two inch senior, number 30, Matt Knapp. The head coach of the DeKalb Barons, Cliff Hawkins. And now your roster and starting lineup for the Pike Red Devils. Number 15, Michael Russell. 22, Torian Blewett. 34, Devin Thomas. 40, Michael McCoy. 42, Sydney McDaniel. 
44, Keith Dabney. 52, Parnell Smith. And the starting lineup for the Red Devils of Pike. At one forward, a six foot, six inch junior, number 24, Robert Vaden. At forward, a six foot, four inch junior, number 32, Courtney Lee. The center, six foot, six inch senior, number 50, Justin Cage. At guard, a five foot 11 inch senior, number 10, David Barlow. And at guard, a six foot two inch senior, number 30, Darren Yates. Head coach of the Red Devils, Larry Bullington. Our starting lineups brought to you by Motorcycles of Indianapolis. And you might be wondering how these two teams got here. And the road Conseco to Conseco, Dave, uh, very interesting for these teams. Well, let's take a look at the road to Conseco for DeKalb, the Warsaw sectional. They beat the only team to have beaten them during the regular season in Columbia City. It took an overtime to do it. They walked through the uh, regional there at Marion. Pike came through one of the toughest sectionals in the state at Noblesville with North Central and Carmel in that one. And then in the regional, they beat Lawrence North and Ben Davis. And then last week in the semi state, Evansville Harrison. Well, it is a long road to Conseco in more than one way. And certainly, these two teams very deserving of the 4A championship matchup. And DeKalb owns the opening tip off. DeKalb. 26 and one coming in. Liddell had some problems there. Pike comes up with it. Vaden pulls up, jump shot in. Robert Vaden. I'll tell you right now, I've said it all year, Craig. I've seen the young man six or seven times. Robert Vaden, to me, is the best basketball player in high school in the state of Indiana. That is saying a lot, isn't it? It is. There's a lot of really good players. Liddell, the turnaround jump shot, no good. The Cal gets the rebound. And the pick. Here comes Baden on the fly. Slashing. Missing. The rebound put back is good. It counts. Cage will go to the line for the three-point play. Historically, this is what Pike has done. Almost every game, they come out and just try to explode on you in the first three minutes. You're going to see a replay here on Robert Baden's pick and take to the basket. He can go on the dribble. There's a nice rebound by Cage coming in on the Robert Vaden miss and putting it back and gets a chance for a three-point play. Liddell on the uh, personal foul. The free throw is missed. If you're DeKalb, you must not let Pike run out to a double-digit lead early. If you can stay with him the first five minutes, I think you've got a shot. Good recognition there. Liddell, the pass inside. Cook with a two-point field goal, and Alex Cook one of the go-to guys averages close to 19 a game. Leading scorer on the DeKalb ball club. Cage gets it back. Another attempt. Boy, they are just crashing the boards offensively. That is the biggest number one key in the ball game. Don't give Pike second and third chances. Historically, they have owned the offensive boards. They get a lot of their points off of putbacks. And a turnover. Everybody talks about how Pike can score the ball, but they're a very, very good defensive team. Barron basketball finally made it, according to Coach Cliff Hawkins. Well, we're really excited about this game. And uh, uh, it's been a, a, a mission that we put our program on when I came there. Uh, and inside our basketball locker room, uh, the goal of, of the Cal Barron basketball is, is to have the best program and uh, the best uh, team in the state of Indiana. And we put that up there 10 years ago, and, and uh, we certainly have uh, worked hard at that. Uh, our kids uh, believe in themselves. They believe they can play with anyone, and certainly they're looking forward to this opportunity to play in the 4A state championship game against us. Larry Bullington, the head coach for the Red Devils. And the Red Devils put some pressure on Pike. You saw... Uh, Zach Chrisleave get a power shot inside, and while we were gone, Robert Baden put up another basket, and so Pike leads 6-4. In the lane, 
Pike right back at it. And Courtney Lee with a two-point field goal. Courtney Lee is one of the two juniors, Vaden being the other that starts for Pike, and Vaden and Lee have played down the stretch as well as any two players on the team, the other one being Justin Kane. This lead a little bit short. Vaden comes up with it. Now slows it down. Pike, number one preseason, number one postseason, number three in the country according to USA Today. And that's out of bounds. Actually, a little upgrade. USA Today now has him at number two in the country. Pike likes, likes to use that high-low entry in their offense, and that time uh, DeKalb was very alertly uh, deflected it. Pike with the ball and the four-point lead. Very athletic move. Cage gets it back and puts it in. Justin Cage. Four points for Cage. A 30-second timeout on the floor with the uh, Devils ends up by six. Well, Cliff Hawkins knows what I told you earlier. You cannot let this team get out from in six points. That's enough, he says. We're going to take a timeout and get this under control. Nice pass inside the cage. Puts it up, leaves it out, but there's what he does so well. They offensive rebound better than anybody I've seen, and they get an awful lot of their points there. We talked about Pike being number two in the nation, a team by the San Vincent's, St. Mary's, out of Akron, with a young man na named LeBaron James. And if you don't know who LeBaron is, look for the young man driving a Hummer, and you'll figure it out. The best player in the country. He won't go college. He'll go directly to the NBA. Justin Cage going to Xavier. Darren Yates, Ball State. Barlow, PUI, who had a great year this year. There's some Division I prospects and some key impact players next season on the in college ranks. Pike in the transition. Pull up jump shot. Lee won't get it dropped. DeKalb comes up with it. Big rebound there by Liddell. He went high. Adam Liddell above everyone. He's got to do that. He and Cook have really got to get on the defensive bank board. Cook now with the ball. This is Knowles. Knowles on the perimeter. So another way you can attack Pike, in my opinion, and that's look for the run out, fast break. They are so intent on going to the offensive boards that you can leak a guard out, throw the long pass, and get an easy basket along the way. Courtney Lee is first with the personal foul. Good look there at uh, Cliff Hawkins, and you just saw Larry Bullington on the other bench, the Pike bench. Of course, Larry Bullington's son just got drafted number one in baseball last spring and is now in camp. His name is Brian, outstanding pitcher, did his collegiate work at Ball State, Ball State University, and of course now with the Pittsburgh Pirate organization. Tremendous pitcher. Cook with the two free throws, 10-6. I know Larry and his son are very close, but as I am with my son, if my son gets a $4 million signing bonus, <laughs> I might be even closer. I might be a chauffeur. I might do whatever he wants. Uh, that's funny. Rebound coming down to Cook. DeKalb trying to control the tempo here a little bit. I think that's why. Yeah, and there is don't want to Don't race with Pike. Liddell pull up jump shot way long. That wasn't really a good shot. He was well defended and Maybe a couple more passes. Take whatever time it takes, but get a good shot. Maiden's pull-up jumper, good. That's the reason you don't hurry. Yeah, he doesn't miss many, does he? He's excellent. He's averaging 13 points, but on a team where there's at least seven or eight players that could average 13, they could all average 20 if you featured them. But they don't need to be featured. There's too many good players to force anything. Maiden, 52% field goal shooter from the floor. Nice little leader there by Alex Cook, who has all of the points so far for DeKalb. I'll tell you what, Alex Cook is a ball player, and I'm not sure he's announced anywhere from college as you see Gary Yates go up and knock in a three. Yates with his first points. The senior averages close to nine points per game. Yates is a 37% shooter behind the three line, and Barlow's 46%, and Baden is 43. Knowles. Knocks down the three. Michael Knowles. Four point game. DeKalb hanging right in there. Cal comes out in the half court. 1 3 1 trapping. They'll trap the corners right there and right at the 10 second line. 
out of the 1-3-1 track. Jump shot from the side. A little bit short for Yates. Loose in the lane and a personal foul against DeKalb. Remember, the most important thing playing Pike is the defensive boards. You must not give them second chances. Alex Cook committing the personal foul. Going to see the replay, and there comes a rebound, and you see Cage grab it, and you saw Alex Cook go across the arm. Clearly a foul. Free throw a little bit off the mark there on the attempt. Cage is a good free thrower for a big guy. He's 73% on the year, and for a 6'6 guy, that's not bad. And the next free throw attempt. That is off the mark for Cage. A couple of misses, and with two minutes to go here in the period. I tell you what, if the Cal can hang around this first quarter and they're only down four, they can get it close or tied. That's a little new territory for Pike. Usually by the end of the first quarter, they're ahead eight, ten or more. It's loose. Picked up. And a nice way of finishing for Pike. Lee with two more. He's got four. You can see how explosive Pike is. He's got to be alert on every possession. Well, folks, maybe in the northern part of the state haven't seen this Pike team before. They're in for a treat here tonight. But you know what? The Cal keeps fighting back. Great assist there by Adam Waddell down to Alex Cook on the low block. Cook with two more. Four-point ball game. And too long intended for Yates. Out of bounds. There is time on the floor from Conceca Fieldhouse, the 4A state championship. The Red Devils on top by four. Back in a moment from Indianapolis. Stay tuned. Shooting to start the ball game. Cage for Pike is two of six with, and also has four rebounds. Baden's three of four. Cook was three of three shooting for DeKalb. See on your screen there, points in the paint. Pike definitely has the advantage there with their leaping the ability and athletic skill. And a steal. Speaking of athletic skills, Barlow with a nice steal and the pull-up jumper by Yates. Yates with five points. Pressure in the backcourt. Pike normally presses some way all the time. Oh, and the official goes down. The pull-up jumper is off the mark by Barlow. The putback attempt, no good. The tip, no good. Here comes to Cal. Three on one. They got the numbers. The pull-up jumper on the way, and it's good. Excellent job by Knapp running the floor, knocking down the three, and it's a three-point ball game. Well, I'll tell you what, Matt Knapp shoots 37% half behind the line, and I got to know him up close and personal as my son's team played in the Hall of Fame tournament. He went seven threes on us. Wow. That was a tournament record, and he was the MVP over there. The Cal's got to move here. Seconds ticking off the clock. Now down to three, way out top. They're not going to get it off. They barely do. And the miss at the buzzer by Knowles brings to an end the first period. My goodness, make sure your seatbelt's fastened, folks. Pike on top by three. Second period lying straight ahead from Conceca Fieldhouse, the 4A state championships from Indianapolis. Pike undefeated, 28-0, trying to go to 29-0, the 4A championships. Been an exciting first period. We may see a replay here that you don't often see, and that's an official getting KO'd with the basketball. Our friend Bob Anderson working the game tonight. He was the one that tucked the basketball in the head, and his partner is Merlin Nice. Two good officials, and Bob came over and had a nice chuckle about that play during the dead ball. <laughs> that happens out there. A blistering pace to begin the ball game. Second period action. And Thomas comes up with it. Devin Thomas with a two-point field goal. Well, when one of the uh, Pike Red Devils doesn't get the uh, ball, there seems to always be another one waiting in line for it. Liddell kicks it out. The three is on the way. Off the mark for Knowles. DeKalb, an important offensive rebound. And the scoop. No, they're not going to allow it. I thought it was a great individual move by Zach Grisley to get the rebound. He fought extremely hard for that. He was against two taller players. And then they say he scooted his feet when he scooped it up. Something I should mention, this is the 17th year for the Hoosier basketball top 40 workout. That group will be released Tuesday of this coming week. It, the uh, tryout will be at 1 p.m. on April 13th at Pike High School. All right. 
Cage with a two point field goal. Cage now with six. Seven point lead for Pike. You mentioned Justin Cage. He certainly will be one of the young men at the top 40. There's another one, and Adam Liddell as he goes very hard to the basket. Knowing he's going to get hit, but he doesn't he doesn't care because he's going to get a chance oh, to score. Oh my goodness. And Adam Liddell, he is bleeding profusely right now from the left eye. He got hammered. And that undoubtedly will create a stitch or two. He's not going to get a shoot for free throws. He's got to go to the bench because of the blood. This was nothing intentional. Adam Liddell goes very hard to the basket. You see in the replay, and you see the defender come over trying to block it and just you know the crowd's reacting, but that's not a, that's not a dirty play. No, and he didn't react as if it were. No, not no. at all. He just a uh, young man tried to make a play on the ball and went for the block and uh, got part of the head. Well, maybe a stitch or two for Adam Liddell. Let's pray everything will be all right for him. Bloomington yep. Ford is located across the street from Bloomington South High School. Go with a winner. Go to Bloomington Ford. Where is Bob Nagel? Where is Bob Nagel? We've lost Bob Nagel. We're going to have to find him. He's somewhere in the building. I'll give you a hint. Huh? Find the food, you'll find Bob. <laughs> How you doing, fellas? Hey, where are you, Bob? I tell you, I'm up hey. here in Section 2. Everybody wave in Section 2. Everybody say hello. Everybody wave. <laughs> hey, these are good seats. There isn't a bad seat in this house. The Conseco Field House. Got a chance to go over the concession stand. Got a little T-shirt to take home for the guys. And... Uh, just enjoying the game and uh, well, I'll tell you what what a great day we've had here at Conseco Fieldhouse and on the way up here everybody was saying the same thing what a great day what a great tradition and uh, I'm waiting for the vendor <laughs> you look very comfortable yeah hi Bob good job Bob Nagel I'll tell you what this is a wonderful venue Conseco Fieldhouse and we had a great crowd in the first session Bob's lost in the crowd here in the second session Craig, the only thing I'm questioning about what Bob just said you see that sack in his hand yeah that's food. That's not a shirt. <laughs> Who's he kidding? Oh, my. We've got a delay in the game as Adam Liddell took a hard shot to the head. It, yep. did, it did cause some bleeding. They're now trying to clean up the floor. And I'm, I'm sure uh, Liddell will be back in the ball game. They're going to take him back, get him stitched up, and uh, he'll be back out here playing Tough for his guy. ball club. You bet. Tough boy. We've got a, an extended timeout here with the injury. Back in a moment. Pike on top by seven from Conseco Fieldhouse. Stay with us. To the Sports Medicine Center scoreboard. Pike on top, 23-16. There's time on the floor, an injury timeout. Adam Liddell has gone to the tunnel. I'm now, I believe, to the locker room and possibly for a stitch or two following the contact here and uh, not an intentional foul at all. Dave. No, here it is again. You see Devin Thomas come over, and he's trying to make a play on the ball. And Actually, I think his elbow may have caught uh, Liddell. Right there, his left elbow will catch... You see it right there. He caught it, uh, Liddell just above his left eye and cut it open. Nothing intentional at all. And to the free throw line for DeKalb. It's Caleb Emke who misses on the shot. Visit Community Ford in Morrisville for great deals all year long. They have a knowledgeable sales force and an award-winning service department. That's Community Ford on State Road 67 in Mooresville. To give him credit, he came in and hit one out of two. That's hard to do when you're cold on the bench, haven't been in the in the game flow at all. And of course, in that situation, Coach Hawkins could put any player on his bench in to shoot those free throws when the player is injured at the spot. Loose and out of bounds. Well, Emke on the year, a 65% free throw shooter. There are others out there that have done a little bit better. But he must have had confidence in Caleb. Give uh, DeKalb a lot of credit. They're changing defenses, and I think it had had some effect on Pike. They go to the half-court trap. Now they're back in a 2-3 zone, and they're changing often. Barlow drives the lane. He's denied. The rebound comes out to Knowles. DeKalb with the ball. 6.20 to go here in the period. Six-point Pike lead. Inside. Yeah. Strong pressure there. Cage. Great job defensively. Coach Hawkins thought he got part of the arm. No problem. Barlow into Thomas. And an offensive foul. Offensive foul on Devin Thomas. We got Darren Yates and uh, Courtney Lee coming back in. 
Here's a replay on that last foul, and they call this a charge. Mm. No comment on that. <laughs> yeah, uh, you did see a little movement. Uh, I didn't think it should have been a foul either way. I thought it should have just been play on. Maybe a no-call situation. Exactly. Huh? DeKal back with the ball. Game has slowed down a bit here after a really rapid first period. Baden the rebound. I think the slow pace would benefit the cow because Pike really likes to go up and down. Baden jump pass inside. And Smith travels with the ball. Prime example right there. Robert Baden is a great shooter. He was wide open from 18 feet. He really went up to shoot the ball. Saw his teammate open down low, gave it up. That's why Pike is undefeated, folks. Parnell Smith into the ball game, a six foot six senior, turning the ball over. DeKalb has it back. Baseline, power move to the hoop by Alex Cook. Four point game. I think Coach Hawkins has to be really happy where the Cowboys is right now. They fought back and got it to a four point game. They've got the tempo they want, and they're forcing turnovers yeah. on the Pike Red Devil. And Courtney Lee trying to jam it in. Vaden, it's broken up. Back into the hands of DeKalb. Inside, Chris Lee with a two point field goal. And it's a two point ball game. DeKalb fans on their feet. Now, Pike's seen this before. They've had some close ball games with Lawrence North in the tournament and so on. So uh, this is not new territory for them. Vaden to Lee, cross court pass, and Courtney Lee fouled going to the basket. You know, uh, a good point. Liddell is out of the ball game, arguably one of the best or the best player for DeKalb. And uh, DeKalb's making her move with him in the locker room, getting his eyes stitched up. That young man at the line, Courtney Lee, is really one of my favorite players on the Pike Ball Club. He's only a junior, but he's had a tremendous run the last six or eight ball games all throughout the tournament. Parnell Smith will exit for Pike. Not a good time for everybody to be looking for next year, but if they think Pike's going to be weak next year, they've got Robert Baden back and they've got Courtney Lee. Their B team was undefeated 20 and 0 and their freshmen were 19 and 1. So I wouldn't say the coverage going to be empty. <laughs> I wouldn't either. That is pretty strong. Goes a lot further than just a team goes into the it's a description of the program. Exactly right. That's the difference between a team and a program. Cook. His shot off the mark, rebound fought for. Oh, a little bit of friction there. And not too bad. They just got tangled up and they call it on Caleb Impton. That's a correct call. And again, he just got his arm tangled, tangled up. And it was a foul, but it wasn't any extra character that would uh, amount to anything. The American Youth Baseball or Basketball Tour is now taking team and individual signups for summer weekend events. 23 guaranteed games over the course of the summer. AYBT is a developmental program for girls grades 4 through 11. And there's Vaden in the lane. Boys grades 4 through 11. For more info, call toll free at 1 866 the tour or visit the website at www.aybtour.com. Well, certainly one of the main go to guys when Pike must have a basket is Robert Vaden. He did that the last, last time down. The Cow's done very well. They're still in great shape. They only trail by six. Take care of the basketball, get a good shot. Six point margin. Pike on top. Turn around, half hook. Is that Smooth. nice? Very nice. I really like Cook. Uh, you know, everybody knew about Liddell, but until I saw Cook play at the Hall of Fame Classic, I wasn't that familiar with him. I was really impressed with him over there, and I'm equally impressed tonight. Turnover into the hands of Empty. Turnover is really mounting up on Pike in this quarter. And a steal attempt goes out of bounds. Cook red hot. Cook's five of seven shooting with three, go with three rebounds. Five by four. We'll be back in a moment. The 4A championships from Conseca Fieldhouse. Fieldhouse, Adam Liddell is back on the floor. He had some steri strips applied to his eye. He's going to need some stitches, but he can do that later. He's also changed uniform numbers. He will be wearing number 34. Got blood on the number four jerseys. The folks from uh, Methodist Sports Medicine Center got him ready to go, and he's back on the bench. Wants to go in. The coach going to make sure he's okay. It's swollen. It's cut, but he wants to play. This is the state championship. Dave Nicholson, interesting, too, how big a player 
Liddell is, although with no points, he is a huge impact when he's on the floor for this team. And he's Cal. reporting to the scorer's bench as we talk. Big stat in this quarter, Pike has turned the ball over four times. DeKalb only one. Wow, that is huge. Offensive rebound. DeKalb doing a good job now on the boards here in the second period. This ball is loose and an over back call. Turnover against DeKalb. DeKalb has now turned it over two times. One thing DeKalb has done much better is Liddell re-enters the ball game. They have shut off the second attempt for the most part by Pike. And again, I think that's the number one thing in playing Pike. Do not give them second and third chances on the offensive boards. Four point Pike lead. Boy, this 4A championship living up to all the billing. Excellent game so far. Jump shot, Baden nails it. That's six feet out. Robert Baden with two more. Now in double figures. Talking about the toughness of Liddell. A lot of people he's going to Purdue and they compare him to Brian Cardinal and everybody remembers how Brian Cardinal played. He had stitches and patches every place all over the floor. So if uh, Liddell is that kind of a tough kid, he'll play fine. Robert Baden. He'll play Division I basketball soon. He got one more year left though at Pike and he nails the three. And Baden has already announced for Purdue. He did that as a freshman. And uh, I know the people in Purdue are certainly hoping that he continues to do that. We'll be back. Pike on top. Our Methodist Sports Medicine Center scoreboard showing Pike on top, 32. 23 in the 4A championship game from Indianapolis and want to remind you that Methodist Sports Medicine Center provides sports medicine coverage for the Colts, Indiana Firebirds, 10 Indiana colleges and more than 20 Indiana high schools. To learn more about one of the Midwest sports medicine leaders call 1-800-SPORTS-MED or visit them on the web at MethodistSports.com. Sports, work, life, we keep you in the game. This is the biggest lead of the ball game for Pike. They lead by nine points. They're on a nine to two run over the last two and a half minutes and led by Robert Baden. He's six of eight shooting, six points in the first quarter and already seven here in the second quarter for a total of 13. DeKalb looking to get the ball into the hands of Liddell, who's wearing that new number. He fights for the rebound and it's lost out of bounds. It belongs to DeKalb. Last two possessions, Pike has dropped into a 2-3 zone. It'll be interesting to see if they match up on the OB play. They do. They're back man-to-man. -man. Minute 30 left to go here in the period. Justin Cage is doing a good job on Liddell, denying him the pass where he wants to catch it. He hasn't really even touched the ball here. And now the driving shot by Chris Lieb is off the mark. This is Barlow on the transition. Bounce pass inside. DeKalb comes up with a turnover. Give DeKalb credit. They have forced Pike into error after error here in the second quarter. One minute left. Coach, what do you do? Hold on to that last shot here? Uh, I don't think so. When you're down nine, you look for the good one. And a good read there. That's the value of Liddell. Recognition and the two-point field goal by Cook. You're exactly right. Adam Liddell was the one that made the play with his assist. And again, Liddell with no points, but what a great Watch pass. Watch the defense. They rotate over to help on Liddell, and he fakes, passes around. There's Cook wide open to put it in. And Cook with the three. Alex Cook has this DeKalb team within four. In 10 seconds, they took it from a nine-point lead down to a five. Or four, excuse me. Now Pike's going to take the last shot. But you know what? Hit or miss, the Cowb has some momentum right now. Yes, they do. And Cook has 17 points, just under his season's average. Every game I've seen Pike, when teams have made runs on them, like the Cowb is just finishing doing, they have answered. We'll see how it goes here on the last shot, and particularly how it goes the first three or four minutes of the third quarter. Pike swings the ball, and a steal. Reaching in is Chris Lee. Three seconds, 2.6 and out of bounds. It belongs to Pike. 
Well, I think uh, Chris Leaf there, Zach, should have just probably slowed down, giving the ball to a guard. He made the great play, stealing the basketball. The jumper by Barlow off the mark. And what an exciting first half we've had in the 4A Boy State Finals. 32-28, the Devils of Pike on top. And Bob Nagel busy on the floor here as he's been all day long from Conseco Fieldhouse. And Robert, take it away. With Cliff Hawkins and Coach Courageous effort in that first half for a lot of reasons. But one thing, your kids are uh, not backing down to Pike. They're coming out playing hard. Well, I don't know why everybody says that because bottom line is these kids have won 69 out of 73 games. We're not going to back down to anybody. We may get B because Pike might be better than us. But the bottom line is the Barons, we're, it's not like we came in here 12 and 14 or something. I mean, we won 69 out of 73. I know our kids are going to give all they got. I appreciate the question, though. Yeah. Well, I'm glad I give you the opportunity. Adam Liddell wanted to get back in here. He was only gone for about three minutes, came back, a courageous effort. That three minutes seemed like an hour. But uh, when he got back in here, I thought he got a couple nice rebounds, Alec hit a couple nice shots. We're in good position. We always talk about being six up or six behind. and So we feel pretty good about where we are right now. It's our ball, too. All right, Coach, more questions to come later. Congratulations. Okay. Thanks a lot. All right, head coach Cliff Hawkins of DeKalb. He's pretty uh, optimistic. I think he wanted to be in his ballgame at halftime. That's right where he is. Fellas? Well, he knows how to handle the questions, that's for sure, Dave. Hey, you got to appreciate Cliff Hawkins. I remember <laughs> when he coached at Tri Central, then at Greenfield, and he went up there and he's put this program back together at DeKalb, and he's got every right to be extremely proud of what he's done up there. Pike on top by four here at intermission. Back in a moment from Conseco Fieldhouse as we continue coverage of the 4A state championships from Indianapolis. Back with you from Conseco Fieldhouse. Halftime of the 4A state championship game. The Red Devils of Pike lead it by four over the DeKalb Barons. And as you heard uh, head coach Cliff Hawkins say, hey, we came down here to win this thing. We like where we are. So we've got a great second half coming up for you. Time now for our Watson trivia question. Had some fun with these all day. And uh, here's our question for the 4A state championship. In 1985, Marion ended a perfect season beating Richmond in the final game. Who was the Giants' leading scorer in that game? And again, 1985, Marion ended a perfect season. Who was the Giants' leading scorer in that game? Well, it wasn't that guy there, although he's a Red Devil with a lot of promise for the uh, second half. He thinks his Pike uh, Red Devil is going to do well. And uh, there's this very special presentation going on on the floor once again. And the uh, this is the Project XL uh, winners being honored here at halftime. And... Uh, we're going to check on those uh, winners and award winners brought to you by Farm Bureau in a moment. First, we've got a break coming up, then our Watson Chevy answers. Stay with us. A lot of things going on here at halftime. Be right back. With the Conseco Fieldhouse and the winners of Project XL, the competition created and funded by Farm Bureau Insurance in cooperation with the IHSA. Through this unique program, Farm Bureau Insurance has awarded more than $450,000 to Indiana teens. This year, students from 246 high schools from across the state submitted more than 5,000 entries addressing the topic of identity. We want to congratulate the uh, video art champion, Clay Hassler from Evansville North, state champion of the 2D art category, Jerry Foley from Lafayette Jeff, champion of the music category, Neil Warner of Court uh, Courtney Moore and Mike Bushman, all from Hagerstown High School, and the winning in the uh, best of show uh, a category for the state champion in writing was Lindsay Beeching from Kankakee Valley. A lot of other uh, award winners, and we congratulate all of them, and certainly Farm Bureau Insurance for their great work in supporting the efforts of the young people here in the tournament and also with Project XL. Here's our Watson trivia question answer. In 1985, Marion ended a perfect season. They beat Richmond in the final game. Who was the Giants' leading scorer? Well, of course, it was LaFon Bowen. Bowen's at 21 points in that state championship game, and of course, earlier today, we crowned another undefeated state champion in the Cash Kings. Been a great day. Second half of the 4A championship game coming up next on the LaCie Broadcasting Network. Time where you see Pike with the lead, a four-point margin here at intermission, 32-28. Some interesting play in the first half. Barons with their share of highlights, Dave. Let's take a look at the, the highlights for DeKalb. And uh, we'll do that. Let's quickly grab the coach, though, and uh, Bob is ready on the floor. Go ahead, Bobby. Larry Bullington alongside, and Coach, uh, you got a little bit of a cushion Sorry, there in the first half. They battled back, uh, got pretty emotional there toward the end of the first half. Well, they're a fine basketball team. There's no doubt about that. We've just got to be 
able to sustain our play a little bit. We'll play well at times, and we lose our concentration there for a little bit at the defensive end and at the offensive end. So we just got to be more consistent and sustain our level of play. Good luck to you, Coach. Thanks a lot. All right, Larry Bullington, who knows this team, knows the pulse of this team. I don't think there's any major changes at halftime. I don't know. Dave Nicholson would know better than we about the changes you make at halftime, but he's uh, got a great ball club, and we expect him to play well in the second half. Indeed, as we said, a four-point margin. Good play in the first half, as Dave Nicholson notes here with some of those key highlights. There's DeKalb, Matt Knapp pulling up and busting a three for the DeKalb, DeKalb Barons. And then you're going to see Alex Cook operate on the inside on a nice half hook to get his team two points. For Pike, number 30, Darren Yates with the outside shot. And you're going to see come right back to Robert Faden behind the three line that hits a three. Your halftime highlights. Let's take a look at the halftime stats brought to you by Arturo's Italian Restaurant. Field goal shooting, DeKalb 46%, Pike 49%. You're going to see these stats are really even, just like the score. Rebounding, Pike has an edge, but only by three. Turnovers, DeKalb 9, Pike 7. Those stats are just as even, Craig, as the score as Pike leads by four points. Well, you can't get them much closer. Our halftime stats brought to you by Arturo's Italian Restaurant. Arturo's, Howard Kelman's favorite Italian restaurant in Indy. Howard, uh, so much a part of this broadcast team all during the season, Dave. I know uh, he's probably out there watching, and we want to thank Howard for his fine work, and uh, also our producer here tonight, Sean Humphrey and Dave West, and all the others that have made this broadcast during the day so special. Dennis Casey here along the side, along with Tim Borf with our stats. And I want to thank as well the WHMB general manager, our flagship station manager, Keith Passan, for all his fine work. Sales manager, Steve Butler, as well. Craig, oh, yeah, we Kristen Airy, too. Craig, we saw how excited uh, Cliff Hawkins was at halftime, enthusiastic. I've got an idea that Larry Bullington set a little different tone in the Pike locker room and probably doesn't feel like his ball club has played nearly as well as they can, whereas I think the Cal feels like they've played pretty well. I think Bullington hit it on the head. Uh, he's talking about the inconsistency of his team. Well, too many errors in the second quarter. That's not their nature. Cal has the ball to come out to open the second half with it Liddell and he drops it in for his first points of the game very strong move with the drop step dribble and then went up and just dropped it over the front edge Adele playing with a gash over his left eye two point ball game the jump shot off the mark rebound right back to Pike and a whistle beneath the basket. Cage playing real hard down there. That's going to be on Justin Cage. Felt like he had a shot to go up and get it and put it back. Got the over-the-top foul, and that's a good stop for DeKalb. They used the full-court pressure. Uh, not too many teams have had the courage to press Pike this year, and frankly, I think it's been effective for DeKalb. Well, DeKalb very poised here, and there's the reach, uh, reach in by Vaden. Pike fans react to that. That's uh, Roberts Vaden's first personal. Robert Vaden, folks, committing to Purdue verbally before before his freshman year. Is that special or what? Uh, that's great for a young man. It's great for Purdue and the way he's playing. Uh, I'm sure uh, Purdue's very very happy with that commitment. Two point ball game. Calb with the ball, Chris Lee along the baseline. He stepped on it. He towed it, didn't he? He really was along the baseline as he got his bottom foot on it. Turnover to Calb. Those turnovers, single digits in the first half. I really love what, like what the Calb's doing. They're getting that ball down low to either Chris Lee or Liddell, and they're attacking the basket. Cooks, another one, can take it at him. They're, they're not uh, giving in to the outside shot. Baby, the lean in shot. Bodies on the floor. Here comes DeKalb. No whistle. Bob Anderson said no advantage play on it. Chris Lee. These two heavyweights going toe to toe right now. We're knotted at 32. This is new territory for Pike to be tied in the third quarter. They've had runs made on them, but they hardly ever give up the lead. Cage missed it. Rebound Liddell. Cliff Hawkins holds up the open palm, which means slow it down, get into the offense, run your stuff. 
This is the first tie of the ball game. Liddell, pressured. Chris Lee, travel. He did travel. He turned it over. He's battling size in there. I thought he did a great job of catching that pass. That pass was thrown perfectly by Liddell away from the defender, and it was thrown like a bullet. And Chris Lee handled the pass, but he wasn't able to get the shot. A little bit of a break there, and they can't capitalize. Yates on the missed layup. Wide open layup for Darren Yates. Didn't shoot it into the glass. He shot it across the rim. You got to shoot those runners into the bank board. Cook in traffic, coughs it up. Cage comes up with it quickly ahead. Here's Barlow. Bounce pass. Baden with a nice finish. Robert Baden now with 15 points. David Barlow the credit for that. He penetrated through the defender and through the great bounce pass. Some trouble. The pick. Barlow the steal. And the whistle, the foul from behind, that'll be on Knowles, his first. It was a good foul, Craig, because certainly Pike was headed for a layup, and I'm not sure that Knowles did that on purpose, but it turned out to be a good foul. Well, let's see what the folks at home think on this. Huh? Here comes Michael Knowles in behind. Got him in the back a little bit, and that certainly saved an excellent opportunity for Pike to score. Pike up by a couple. I want to remind you that TGI Friday's downtown, located at 501 West Washington Street across from Victory Field. TGI Friday serves breakfast, lunch, and dinner seven days a week, starting at 6 a.m. Mike with the ball and the two-point lead. Baseline, open up jump shot, and no, Chris Lee clears. Good defense. Pike is getting the ball on the rim, but they're not getting open, really open looks. Cal works it around the horn. Now the right wing. Liddell inside. Chris Lee pressure. It's a legal play. Look at Cliff Hawkins. He doesn't think so, but Justin Cage, you're allowed to trap that ball on the backboard. In my opinion, it was not on its downward flight. You can pin it on the board. And that is huge. Courtney Lee with a three-pointer. Lee with nine points. Five-point lead for Pike. Liddell kicks it out. Cook's three is good. Nice move there by Adam Liddell to penetrate and kick back to Alex Cook. Liddell created the play by punch and pitch. So unselfish is Liddell. He has set up a number of plays, though, and some good looks. Cook getting the last one. He has 20. It's a great point because Adam Liddell coming into this season was looked on as the star of this team, but he has shared the basketball with his teammates all year long. And look at him play defense. Cook with the ball. Cal looking to get it inside. They haven't been real successful there. Now Liddell kicks it back out. The pull-up jumper a little short for Knowles. Chris Lee gets it back and it counts. I'll tell you what, is that Chris Lee tough? He's only 6'4", but he's in there battling the likes of Cage all night, Baden all night, and here comes Cornell Smith, another 6'6", and he, uh, Chris Lee has more than held his own in there. Well, Chris Lee, although not that tall, he's got the wide body. I mean, he is built. This guy's strong down there and matching up very nicely right now with Pike. Eight points and now nine for the six foot four senior. Pike and the Barons. What a game. Back in a moment. 3.27 left in the period. All from Indianapolis. Our Methodist Sports Medicine Center scoreboard showing DeKalb on top by a point. Alex Cook leading all scorers with 20 points, 15 so far for Robert Vaden and the Pike Red Devils. That's, we're looking at the first lead for DeKalb in this ball game. They lead 38-37, and I guarantee you this is new territory for the Pike Red Devils. I am most certain they have never trailed this late in a ball game, even though we're 327 to go here in the third quarter. DeKalb has shot the ball well. They're 15 of 30 for 50% for the game. Pike has cooled off 16 of 38 for only 42%. 
Well, if you heard Cliff Hawkins between halves talking to Bob Nagel, he said, you know what? We're a good team. It's not like we're the underdog here necessarily. The putback by Courtney Lee. Boy, what a rebound by Courtney Lee. It seemed like he not only went higher than anyone, but he hung up there for a second or two and waited for the ball to come to him. Liddell, turn, shoots, no good. Vaden, it's loose. Chris Lee hustling again. Comes up with the ball for DeKalb. Liddell. Intercepted. The steal by Barlow. Barlow going to play Division I basketball. Baden as well. He misses on the shot. How many times has Pike had a basketball go in the rim yeah. and kick back out? Part of that is, excuse me, part of that is the defense and the, the Cal's playing. They're contesting every shot with a hand up. One point ball game. Pike on top. Approaching that two minute mark here in the third period. Chris Lee sneaks away, finds the open Liddell. There's Chris Lee making a great play again. He pinned his bun on the bottom side. Well coached ball club to Cal. They're passing away from the defender, made the help side come over and dropped it down to Liddell for the two. Barron's on top by a point. Vaden lost it off the foot. Out of bounds to the Cal. Well, good shot of the crowd and some really good numbers here, Dave. Well, tonight we've got 13,404. This afternoon session, the morning session, 13,036. For a total today of 26,440 people here to watch Indiana High School basketball. That's outstanding. And there are other commissioners around the country that come to watch. And I believe the commissioner from Ohio is here. There's a. Out of bounds play belongs to DeKalb. It's kind of hard to keep track of the numbers since you've gone class and show the same thing. They say, well, there's only 13,000 here, but there's 26,440 that bought a ticket to get in this arena sometime today. And that's all the state finals. So that's that's still outstanding. It's still the biggest draw. The Hawkins looking down his bench with 127 left to go in the third period. From Conseco Fieldhouse. We're glad you've tuned in. Pike has the ability, Craig, to score points in bunches. They haven't had a great run yet. I think they'll have one before this game's over. Yeah, this game is all about runs. And you know that as well as anybody as a coach. And Pike can score in a hurry. Here's Baden, the three pointer. Just as we described it, huh? The young man's got ice in his veins. I'm telling you, he's down one point. He says, no problem, I'll hit a three. Baden, 18 points. Devils by two. Got Chris Lee open underneath. They didn't find him. Courtney Lee. Here it comes. Give me a little peanut butter with that jam. Courtney Lee. And maybe the game, the beginning of the run I just spoke of. They can do it in punches. The more they score, the harder they play defense. Liddell, pull up jump shot in the face of a defender. Misses Lee with the rebound. Didn't like that last shot, Mr. Liddell. You're a great player, but you know, uh, the momentum's in Pike's hands and you took a really difficult one. Now they're gonna take the last shot of the quarter. Fans are on their feet. Gotta wonder how many times DeKalb can keep digging back. You know, they weren't able to extend that one point lead they had a couple of minutes ago. Now they're down four. They gotta dig in again, make stops, and then come up and score at the other end. Barlow kicks it out. Baden shot no good. Here's the last second shot, and it's off the glass, bringing the third period to an end here in what has become a very exciting 4A matchup. The Devils on top by four, back in a moment from Conseca Fieldhouse along the Lassie Broadcasting Network. Well, we had the third quarter. Both teams put up 12 points. Pike still leads by four. We reset the clock. Eight minutes and counting to go. Now down to 7.49. A three-point basket and a foul. Vaden will go to the line for a chance for a four-point play. Well, I mentioned early in this game that Robert Vaden, in my opinion, is the best high school player in the state. He's only a junior. That's one reason. He steps up at tough times and makes huge shots. 
and he, he just plays both ends very hard. He rebounds and put it on the dribble. He plays point guard when they take David Barlow out. He does a little bit of everything. He can play any position, they say. Mm -hmm. Very talented. A seven-point Pike lead. And Pike has just completed that run I was speaking of. They were down one, so they put a run up about eight points in a row. They lead by seven. Chris not Smith, not a, yeah, not a good reach around there by Parnell Smith. He was directly behind Chris Lee. Once he catches the ball, don't reach on him. His first team score. Fourth team foul for Pike. M. Key taking a seat on the side for DeKalb. Neither team has much foul trouble. DeKalb has only committed three fouls here in the second half. Liddell draws the foul. Boy, he wanted that thing to drop. You know, it's not enough just to get fouled. He would desperately want that basket to go in. Well, the last two fouls have not been really smart fouls by Pike because the defenders left their feet. And you're going to see uh, Justin Cage here go for the fake. See? Stay down. If you're going up the block, you wait until the shooter has left his feet. Liddell connects in the free throw, his first time to the line. Need to give that young man at the line there as you look at Cliff Hawkins, his coach. Liddell, a lot of credit. He got his eyes split open there in the first half. I don't think it's slowing down at all. He's still very, very aggressive at both ends. Courageous effort by Adam Liddell, the six foot seven senior. Liddell, six points. Five-point fight lead. Here's that half-court 1-3-1 one, one trap that the LeBaron has, has used throughout the game. Oh, the ball. Yeah, four players that touched the ball in the matter of about two seconds. And I think some goaltending call. They call offensive or a basket interference on DeKalb. Two or three guys up there. Here's the play. There's the shot. Cage puts it on the rim. And they're saying that Liddell went up and tipped it across the rim, and it looked like he did get a hand on it. Yep. So Mike's back up seven. Pressure. Across the timeline is Knowles. May not want to risk it, but on that press breaker for DeKalb, Chris Lee has been wide open down deep. We'll watch and see if they pick that up. Liddell. Yep, swings it around. The Notice how down. hard and crisp they pass the ball. Yep. There's no floaters. <laughs> they fire the basketball, and you better be ready to catch it or you'll be wearing it. Yeah, passing with authority. And that's what you have to do against a quick team, and Pike is definitely a quick team. But not passing firm enough or too firm that it, you know, blows a guy away. There is some touch involved as well. Pike setting things up. Six and a half minutes to play. What a day of basketball from Conceco Fieldhouse. This is Barlow, gets around his man, shoots a little strong over the top of the rim. And the rebound comes down to DeKalb and quickly stolen by Barlow. Give Barlow credit, he made a mistake the other end. Missed rather badly, came back and made a steal. Made up for it, got his team the ball back. Lee inside to Smith, and the basket counts. There's a story. Parnell Smith, the groin injury earlier this season, slowed at the start. He later came in and, you know, as a senior, it's good to see him finish strong. We're going to see a replay here, and you're going to see a great take by Parnell Smith. Be on the left side of the lane. Now he puts it down with his left hand, shields it off. He's got a huge wide body. No one could get to the ball. He finishes and gets a chance for a three. Of course, Parnell Smith's brother, Rodney, was a big-time player for Purdue University. Just like that, a 10-point margin. Pike on top. And Almost a slow came to visit and just went on Dennis Casey here. Matt Knapp with a three-point play. Yeah, Barlow in our lap. And a travel. As I can't we, say about much about the water case. Last year, I got Pepsi all over me, at least. You rescued it. A little water ain't going to hurt anything, huh? No, it's not on anybody yet. <laughs> I'm counting on Casey to build a dam with all these papers he's got and make it flow to my right. <laughs> Peyton comes up with it. Wow. That pass brought down nicely by Cage. That was headed for the stands. Peyton's turnaround jump shot. 
little strong. That was well defended. Barlow gets it back. I'm tight. I take my time, get a good shot, and that's exactly what Coach Bullington has said. He put his palm down and said, set it, get what we want. We're ahead seven. Let's get the shot we want. The Cow only has 14 fouls. The Red Devils have five, but I know uh, Pike would like to get into the bonus. Pike refusing to be patient. Inside, Cage counted. Justin he got, Cage. He got bumped, still was strong enough to go up and finish on that. DeKalb handling the pressure. Open man, inside, goals, and a travel is right. The American Youth Basketball Tour is now taking team and indi individual signups for summer weekend events. 23 guaranteed games over the course of the summer. AYBT is a development program for girls age 5th through 11th and boys grades 4th through 11th. If you'd like more information, call toll free 1 866 the tour or visit the website at www.aybtour.com. Here's a replay. They felt like Knowles can scoot at his feet. Hard to see in that replay where he came down if he had control of the ball before his feet scooted or not. Pike on top by nine, time on the floor. Back in a moment as we continue the 4A championships. HSAA Boys State Championships brought to you by Indiana Members Credit Union, number one in Indy. 451 is all that remains in a game that caps off a full day of basketball here at Conseco Fieldhouse. Craig, we spoke of a run that Pike would probably make there going into the fourth quarter. Pike went from being one point down to up 10 points in a three minute stretch. Score went from 40-39 to 52-42 Pike. They now lead by nine with four minutes and 40 seconds to go. And they have possession of the ball. Yeah. That's incredible. Incredible. The Cal feels like they can make one more run and get back in the game. We'll see. 54-45. Pike on top, left hand shot, Yates on the miss. Here comes DeKal. Knowles, Chris Lee drives, and had a block, but a foul will be called. I believe that'll go on Cage. I'm not sure, there was two defenders there. It was on uh, Lee. I thought Courtney Lee would did the fouling because I really thought your call was right. I thought it was a blocked shot by Cage, and it was, but Lee got him down below. So Chris Lee to the free throw line. He has been very effective here today for Cliff Hawkins. He has been impressive. You're exactly right. He's battled and battled and still is battling in there. He knows how to position, and that sends a message to players out there that are no taller than 6'4". You can play this game, and you can play the five spot down low if you learn how to position. And it goes back to what we talked about all day, sound, fundamentals, and good footwork. And not only can he play the position, but he's playing it against one of the best teams in the country. Mm -hmm. At six foot four, Chris Lee with a free throw. Here's that half court one three one trap by DeKalb. Courtney Lee. He's going to play D1 basketball somewhere. A couple schools interested, certainly. More than that, but uh, two in particular, Iowa and Indiana in the running. Yeah, he's only a junior. There'll be a lot of people chasing him. And a foul along the baseline. Cook had a bit of a seam there, and he'll go to the free throw line. Vaden picks up the personal, and he's kept himself out of foul trouble. He's done a good job. I know David uh, Barlow had that funny expression on his face. He didn't think he found he was right. He didn't. It was Robert Vaden. Cook at the charity stripe. The Cows uh, missed a couple opportunities here the last two times at the free throw line. They've got to make these if they're going to make that run and get back in this thing. One of two from the line there for Cook. 56-47, nine-point margin. Pike on top. And a step in. in. Cook. Oh, great recognition, huh? Great anticipation by Cook. Boosted out, got the layup. Pike should be able to throw the diagonal pass to the opposite side of the court. Cook with 23 points for DeKalb. Another steal. Another one. And a foul. 
And to the free throw line for a couple of free throws will be Knowles. Well, that's a pretty good guy to have up there if you like the job, but he's a 90% shooter on the year. And Dave, you just talked, you talked a moment ago, Vaden there picking up his, his uh, fourth foul. You talked about how quickly Pike got back into this thing. Now look at DeKalb coming back. Uh, if he hits these, they can get it down to a five-point spread, and they were down 10 just about 35 seconds ago. Great defense, two times in a row. Cook stole and scored, Knowles scored and just got fouled, and here it is. Knowles just steps in, anticipated it, out by himself. Baden comes down, went up high, but got the body on him down low. Knowles in the miss. Barlow comes up with it. Calb shooting just under 69% on the night. Baseline and a steal. Three straight times to Calvis forced turnovers against Pike. And a steal going the other direction. I still think Pike can throw that diagonal pass. If they get it down in the left corner, then Robert Baden will be open up high. Pike's going to take a timeout and yeah. talk it over. A timeout following the Yates steal. 3.02 left to go here in the fourth period. I want to remind everyone out there again, this is the 17th year for the Hoosier Basketball Magazine Top 40 workout. Those top 40 players will be named Tuesday and released in the press on this coming Tuesday. The tryout will be at Pike. It'll be on April 13th, and it'll start at 1 p.m. That is open to the public. Boy, talk about cream of the crop, huh? <laughs> How do you get it narrowed down to oh. the top 40? I mean, you go across Indiana, the top 10, 12, that's pretty easy. Then you've got so much equality, and they're all good players. That's a tough job. Well, a problem that uh, is pretty common here in the state of Indiana, and Bob Nagel knows a lot about the quality of play. Let's go to Bobby for an update. Amazing the fans you find out here at Conceco Fieldhouse from the Indiana Fever, Neil Ivey alongside. Neil, you got a cousin on the Pike uh, JV team. Yeah, um, Reese Cheatham, he's a freshman. He's pretty good. I'll tell you what, uh, good to see you. Uh, Fever getting get ready to play here in a couple of weeks, and uh, wish you the best of luck. Yeah, uh, we play um, April 27th, first day of training camp, and we're all pretty much ready. I'm ready to go, so. Great to see you, Neil Ivey from uh, University of Notre Dame. Now the Indiana Fever. A lot of people uh, of interest watching this game tonight, partner. What a great ball game. Indeed. Hey, uh, tell the L. Wallen says, yo. Justin Cage hammered. He'll go to the free throw line. Nice strong move there by Justin Cage, and he was able to draw the foul on Chris Lee. That's only the fifth team foul on DeKalb. That hurts Pike a little bit because they're holding the ball, so uh, DeKalb can foul them another time and not put them at the free throw line, whereas Pike already has 18 fouls. Every time they foul DeKalb, DeKalb shooting free throws. DeKalb with the ball, trailing by eight. Robert Faden's been, excuse me, Craig, been awfully aggressive there. I thought he had his left hand in the back and got the ball with his right. Uh, as I said, the Cavs in the bonus. You want to play good, solid, hard defense, but I don't think you want to put the Cavs at the free throw line and stop the clock. A steal attempt, and once again, out of bounds, it belongs to DeKalb. Another point on that, Robert Vaden is playing with four personals. He's pretty valuable to this Pike ball club, so you would not want to see him take himself out with the fifth foul. Yeah, Vaden, very valuable, 21 points. There he is right there, matched up with Cook. Cook leads all scores with 23 in the lane. Denied there. Pike comes up with it. Not a bad move. Cook is aware of Baden hit fourth foul, and he took it right at him. Wow, Baden inside. A count of Cage. And did you see the way Baden just streamlined that pass? Well, when you're 6'6", you can see over the top of those traps. You're going to see here, that's one of the diagonal passes I mentioned earlier. You see that from the corner to the opposite side. Against a 1-3-1 trap, you usually have some holes there, and you have to fire it hard because you see what happens if you don't because DeKalb has stolen those passes on three different occasions recently. Gage misses on the free throw. All of a sudden, we're 10-point game. This goes up and down in a hurry. These leads. Jump shot on the side, good for Cook. Alex Cook with two more. He's played a great game. 
with a minute and 45 to go. Pike is trying to become the second undefeated team today to win a state championship. Cass has already won theirs. Nice look by Yates in the cage and a whistle. 140 left to go. With an eight point margin now, the minute 40, gonna see a replay, but clock is the enemy for DeKalb. Nice bounce pass from Darren Yates. Right, he just set uh, Cage up really well. And Cage connects on the free throw. Cage is going to Xavier next year. I think he's going to play very well at the next level. Yeah, I think he'll fit into that program nicely, too. The missed shot. Liddell comes up with it. Got to go a little quickly now for DeKalb. You got to get multiple possessions. Liddell, the three attempt. Well, Marlowe, one of the smallest guys out there, comes up with the rebound. He's an excellent point guard. And Robert Vaden uh, threw it when Yates wasn't quite expecting it. Yates was clearing an area of the court. And they talk about it. And Yates says, let me clear and then throw it to me. 120 left. David Barlow is going to go to IUPUI next year. He'll make a fine point guard there. Ron Hunter, excellent job this season. That's a great program there. That's Pike Ball. Yep. Now that was the hands of Chris Lee. And with a minute five again, uh, the, the Calv uh, first in, they indicated they wanted a timeout. And he's going to take a 30. But, uh, you know, the clock is the one that they're battling now. When you trail by nine and the other team has a position, uh, they're going to have to stop the clock with either a steal or foul very quickly and do that two or three times. Well, Pike battling here in the 4A matchup against DeKalb. And earlier today, our winners in 1A, 2A, and 3A, proud, proud winners at that. And Tell you, not only do we have our winners to announce, but also our Trester Awards, and you know we'll go through all of that at the end of this game and kind of recap the day, not only the 4A game, but all the games played here at Conseco Fieldhouse. And fans have been great. The security here has been tremendous. The Conseco Fieldhouse crew just par excellence. They have been great. You have to give DeKalb a lot of credit. Uh, they're going to be really, really proud of their effort here at the state championship game. And I don't mean that as a moral victory because you found out at halftime, Coach Hawkins doesn't like to talk about those things, but his kids have battled and battled and battled. Pike is just a very, very athletic team. And Liddell picks up the personal foul in the backcourt. Stops the clock with 103 left to go. Vaden's 9 of 16 shooting with 21 points. Cage, 6 of 13 shooting, 15 points and 11 rebounds. Barlow, 6 assists, 5 rebounds. He's the point guard. <laughs> Goes on and on. Well, we mentioned earlier, Vaden over 50% from the floor. On the season, well over 50% here tonight. I think that's David Barlow's first point of the game, but he's had to ha handle the pressure that the Cowboys throwing at them all night. He's done a great job getting the ball to the scores in the form of Baden and Cage. Ten point ball game. The Cowboys going to have to fire it up quickly and Knapp does. He misses on the three attempt. Baden, jump pass. Pike will bring it out top. Smart decision. And the foul. 45.8 left to go. Looks like Pike will possibly win that 4A championship uh, unless something unforeseen happens. There's Larry Bullington on the screen. Larry went to Pike really with one thing in mind. That was to win a state championship. He got him to the championship game last year and fell just a, a couple points short. Their goal from that day has to be to get back here and win it. And uh, that's, that's easy to set that goal but it's very hard to reach that goal. And it's very hard to coach a team with as much talent as he has and keep them happy, keep them together. My hat's off to Larry Bullington and the job he's done. Now have the biggest lead up there at 12 points. Yep, 64-52, Pike on top. DeKalb still working hard, but under some pressure. A long shot by Knowles, or Knapp rather. 
Barlow. Likewise, Cliff Hawkins is going to be very proud of this team. It'll go down as one of his highlights, if not the highlight of his coaching career. Yep. He's going to go out of here 26 and 2 and just has done an outstanding job with the college. Well, this has been an outstanding contest between two heavyweights, as we said earlier. And you got to give Cliff Hawkins and this DeKalb team a lot of credit. They just fought and fought and fought as Barlow misses the free throw attempt. Jubilation. That's what it is in the side. Got one starter back for DeKalb next year, and Michael Knowles, the rest are seniors. And I mentioned earlier, Pike has two starters, Baden and Lee both back. That's a pretty good two from the start around for next year. The three is short. Loose ball into the hands of DeKalb, but back into the hands of Barlow. He's been all over the place. Barlow. No use to foul now. Game is over, and they realize it. Pike State chance. They are. Pike, a perfect season. 29-0. and 0. The 4A championship, a convincing 65-52 win over the Barons of the Cow. Our congratulations to Larry Bullington, Bob Nagel on the floor with a coach, a coach's comment or two, Bobby. Well, we got Coach Larry Bullington here, and Coach, congratulations. Your team was tested tonight, but they had an answer. Yeah, we've been tested a lot this year, and we're definitely tested tonight. I thought we did a great job. Uh, you know, we went to our uh, a Jug Ford press there a little bit, got ahead 44 to 40, and it was able to extend it out. We had a real good job defensively down the stretch, and finally moved the ball a little bit better on offense here in the second half. Undefeated season, and that's a feel very special. Uh, very special, state champs. Uh, we're accompanied with the big boys, some of the greatest teams that's ever played in Indiana. No question about that. One of the tough things has to keeping your team focused sometimes. When you're playing a team, you think maybe it's going to be easy. But uh, they answered tonight. DeKalb gave you a good test, well, and they answered. We knew it was going to be easy. I mean, my gosh, those guys are 26 and 1 coming in. We've just taken it one at a time all year long, and that's what we did tonight. And uh, I'm just so proud of them. It's been a great year. It's an absolute great year. Uh, congratulations. You and your staff had a great team. Congratulations. I got a great group of players. I got a great staff. I'm very happy. All right. Good luck to you. Larry Bullington, the uh, state champion coach from Indianapolis Pike, will take it back Ladies over to Craig Wallen. And Dave Nicholson will be back in a moment. All right, Robert. We will step out. We'll be back in just a moment. The 4A champs, Pike, 29 and 0 season record. We'll return in a moment. Stay with us. Champion, the victory over DeKalb. Let's go back to the floor here at Conseco Fieldhouse and Bob Nagel. Bob Thank you very much, Craig. Courtney Lee alongside, along with Robert Vaden and uh, other uh, members of the class coming in, including Parnell Smith and Justin Cage. What a great run and what a tremendous job tonight to win the state championship, finish undefeated. Very special. Oh, I feel it's very special. Going down in history, he's going undefeated to win the state. Not that many teams did it in the state of Indiana, and we was one of them, so it feels great. They gave you a pretty good test tonight. They uh, cut it down a couple of times. They actually had a lead at 40 to 39, and you guys look like you checked each other out with your look and got it done from there. Oh, yeah, they came, they came out ready to play. They took the lead, but we know we had to stick with the game plan and come out and execute. Justin, you've done this before. Does this get old? No, I don't really get old because you play a different team, so... You know, we didn't win it last year, so, you know, we wanted to win it this year, so. Hey, if I can do this my whole life, it never goes to me. Okay, well, this is a great team. The coaching staff, uh, everybody very special in this group. Yeah, very special team. All right, Robert Baden, congratulations. you got to come back and try to do this again next year. That should be fun. We're going to be back with Courtney, my teammate. It's been fun the whole year. What was the key point of this ball game when you looked up and found yourself down one late? Uh, basically, defense intensity and rebounding. That's what we're talking about the whole time, is rebounding and defense intensity. Took it out to a couple of nine-point leads. They battled back. I know you had a lot of respect for DeKalb tonight. Yeah, we had a lot of respect. We just wanted to come out and play hard. That's all we wanted to do is come out and play hard. David Barlow had a couple of points tonight, and they came late, but it didn't matter. You got the job done defensively and out front dishing that ball around. Huh, what did you say? I didn't hear you. You did a great job dishing that ball around and playing defense. Yeah, I tried to. I wasn't scoring, so I had to do something else. So it takes, it takes everything to make this happen. Congratulations, man. Thank you. Thanks, Congratulations. Pike State champions undefeated. 
And I tell you what, a, a group of guys that looks like they had a plan and knew what they wanted to do and got it done. So our congratulations to the Pike Red Devils, and uh, we'll be visiting with our uh, Trustor Award winner here in just a moment, and we'll also uh, be visiting with the team from DeKalb. They did a wonderful job and just presented with their uh, awards, and uh, what a wonderful night, what a wonderful day it's been, and uh, we'll take a break and send it back over to Craig and Dr. Nicholson for uh, some more post game, and we'll be back in a moment. All right, Robert. Alex Cook named the winner of the Arthur L. Trester Award for Mental Attitude. And not only has he been able to get it down on the floor, leading all scores here today with 25 points, but Dave, what an outstanding leader, ranked 40th in his class of 239, member of the National Honor Society, a dare role model, and the accolades go on and on and on for that young man. Well, he fits the same mold as we talked about the other three Trester Award winners today. Outstanding young man in the classroom and certainly an outstanding basketball player. And uh, I'm sure that he's going to play at the next level. I've been so impressed with him. I've seen him play three games counting tonight. Every time he's brought it to the court and played very well. A lot of emotions up there on the stand as you see uh, the DeKalb team going up and get their awards. And they feel a little disappointed now. But I tell you what, they're going to be awfully, awfully proud every time they walk through the halls and see that state runner-up trophy there. They got beat by a great basketball team in Pike. Outstanding program at Pike, and our congratulations certainly to Pike, 29-0. DeKalb, meanwhile, finished the this, this season at 26-2. And, and as we said earlier, the mental award going to Alex Cook of uh, DeKalb. And uh, we want to mention that uh, he is actually undecided as to his collegiate future, and uh, we wish him the very best. If, the, if there's one key stat in tonight's ball game, it probably was in turnovers for the most part throughout the first three quarters. It was pretty even, but it ended up 22 turnovers for DeKalb and only 13 for Pike. Pike playing good basketball in many, many ways. Back in a moment, our post-game coverage continues from Conseco Fieldhouse. Stay tuned. A 13-point winner over DeKalb. It looked uh, maybe a little more... A uh, close uh, game uh, during the game, actually, than what that score indicates. I don't think it was nearly a 13-point game. Do you, Dave? No, not at all. It's not indicative of how well uh, DeKalb played Pike. And I say that with the greatest respect for Pike because they are, as their coach Larry Bullington pointed out, one of the better teams in the history of Indiana basketball. Who can say where they rate? But I've said all along I thought they were one of the top five ever. Bob, I believe, has our Trester Award winner. Robert? Well, you never tire of meeting these exceptional young men and uh, this tremendous uh, Arthur L. Trester Award winner, Alex Cook. Alex, congratulations. I know it's kind of mixed emotions for you right now, but what a tremendous career and what a great job getting it done in the classroom and being a great leader in your school. Thanks. You know, it kind of feels kind of weird right now, but we lost a great team and we gave it our best. And uh, we just came a little short tonight. You guys are up 40 to 39 and dreaming of big things, and I know that really woke them up a little bit, but you never stop battling. This thing went right down to the wire. Yeah, you know, this team never quits. And, uh, you know, we just lost a great team, but we got a great team right here. We just we just kept fighting. You got a great run, I think 69 and, and 5, I think, over the last uh, years, and that's great leadership. Uh, introduce your starting lineup here. You've got a great team at home as well. Yeah, you know, uh, we got four seniors, Adam Nadell, Zach Chrisley, Matt Knapp, and myself that, that didn't want to lose, you know, and we fought all the way here and uh, just fell a little short. Behind every successful young man, there's a family that's done a great job. Introduce your mom and dad to us. It's my dad, Ron, and my mom, Kathy. They're just great parents, and I thank them, thank them a lot. What do you think about the athletic director at your school? <laughs> he's, he's all right. <laughs> Ron, you're the athletic director of DeKalb. I know you're proud of all these young men, but certainly your son today. Very proud of Alex. Um, he's given us a lot of thrills along with the whole team, the coaching staff. And, um, you know, I, I, I know the team's disappointed right now, but um, I want to thank everybody involved with this tournament for just a great experience, not only for, for Alex, our family, our, our team, our coaching staff, and, and our whole community who really supports our school. Great to see the blessing you can have when you combine athletics and academics and get it done. Well, and, you know, give credit where credit's due. Alex has always been a hard worker and um, it's an excellent, 
an awesome award for him. And just a thrill. Congratulations. I want to talk to Mom Kathy. Uh, behind every successful man is a woman who couldn't be more surprised at times, but also more proud. Got a couple great examples here, and I know the sacrifices you make, not only as a mother of an athlete, but a wife of an athletic director who has to spend a lot of time on the job and loves the job. Uh, it's a big sacrifice. Uh, congratulations to you for all your accomplishments. Thank you. I'm just very proud of all of my boys. They all do a great job. Well, you should be. Uh, I know we don't have any specific college plans yet, but Dad's got enough degrees. He can go any place and, and uh, have an opportunity to follow in Dad's footsteps. Yeah, he has a couple choices there. And we'll start working on that next week. Right, Alex? All right, congratulations to the entire Cook family, and uh, what a great accomplishment. Thank you very much. Thanks, Alex. Congratulations. Thanks. Thank you. All right, this is what we uh, always see uh, uh, with the Tester Award winners, and now we've got a chance to... Uh, Talk to Cliff Hawkins, the head coach of DeKalb, who's uh, obviously has been very proud of his team all day. Coach, appreciate the opportunity to talk to you again. And I, I just, I'm so proud of the, the fact that you came in here and you had your jaw set, your neck bowed. Uh, you're going to give it everything you get. Your kids uh, played great for you. Well, I think it was a great state championship game. And I want to congratulate Pike on the victory. And I, I'm really proud of our team. I, I feel like they are a little more physical than we were, a little more athletic than we were. But I, I felt like we did a lot of things well. But most importantly, we competed for all of DeKalb and for all the northern half of the state. We've traveled every weekend, you know, and uh, I just think uh, we came to win, and, and I think it showed in the attitude of our players. Well, as a coach, I know your, uh, your goal is uh, maybe to win the state championship, but to have the kids have the best chance to be as successful as they can be, I think you got that done. Absolutely, and I appreciate your coverage and saying that, and uh, that is what it's all about in competitive athletics and high school athletics is that everybody gives their best, give their ultimate effort, and uh, when it's over, it's over, and we move on to new chapters. But we would have liked to have written this last chapter as a state championship, but we'll write it as a state runner-up, and it'll keep giving us something to work toward. Well, everybody in DeKalb has got to be very proud of the Fort Wayne area. Congratulations, a great representative from the north. Thank you very much. All right, Cliff Hawkins, the head coach. And uh, coming over now, we have a young man who uh, you talk about giving his all and maybe more. Adam Liddell is here. Adam, congratulations on a great run. Great representative from the northern half and uh, just a courageous effort on your part tonight. Well, thank you very much. Um, all, all my praise goes to Alex Cook tonight. He played his heart out. He deserves that award more than anybody in the state. He is, has the best attitude. He, you know, he's the best student, the best teammate to play with. And, uh, you know, we, 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 gave it, we gave it a shot. You know, we stuck it out there. We got the lead. We couldn't hold it. But, um, you know, uh, Pike's a better team. They deserve this. They deserve to go undefeated for the whole season. And, uh, you know, they deserve those nets. You guys have had a great run, 69 wins in your last three years. What a special group, and I know that uh, that bond that you guys formed and trusting each other and believing each other and working together is going to last a lifetime. I mean, it is. You know, the, uh, the, you know these guys are going to be friends with me my whole life, and uh, I'm, I was really looking forward to this game and uh, looking forward to playing against Seiko. But, uh, I mean, it's just, you know, we, we gave our, we played our hearts out, and I don't think you could ask for a better better uh, better team to see play Pike than uh, Cal High School. And uh, we gave it the, we gave it our best shot, and it uh, didn't work in our favor, but that's, that's the way it goes sometimes. Uh, you guys are very special, and you gave us all a great treat tonight. Congratulations on a great season and a great career. Oh, thank you very much, sir. All right, and uh, but I'll tell you what, he doesn't look as good in the number 34 as he did in number 4, but uh, had to make the change uh, mid-game, and... Uh, Mom's waiting to take some pictures over there, and uh, very proud of everybody. Congratulations again. Thank you very much. And Adam Liddell from uh, DeKalb, and uh, boy, it's just uh, it's outstanding, partner. You know, everybody came here and gave their best effort. Nobody's walking out of here with their head down. They all did a great job. And you know, Bob, that's what we expect every single year here in the Indiana Finals, and uh, this uh, is no surprise, the 93rd annual contest with all four of the classes here being represented today Dave and uh, just exciting basketball we'll be back in a moment to wrap things up live from Indianapolis stay with us the Pike Red Devils the 4A state champ with their victory over DeKalb it's time now for the Reeves Buick Pontiac play of the game Dave Nicholson this is a huge play Courtney Lee on a steal See it coming up here. He steps in and steals it. His team's ahead only by two points at this time. He slams it down to put Pike ahead 44 to 40. That happened very late in the third quarter. Outstanding play. Gave the momentum back to Pike at that point. And that's our Reeves Buick Pontiac play of the game. Pike, the 4A state champ. Bob Nagel with much more when we come back. 
One more reminder, you stay with us on the 4A Champs Spike. Well, things beginning to clear out here a little bit, but boy, what a day. Close to 27,000 fans through the turnstiles here at Conseco Fieldhouse. And Pike winning the 4A state championships, and they did it in a number of ways. Very effective, but DeKalb really put up a fight. Uh, well, certainly congratulations to Coach Larry Bullington and the Pike Red Devils. Outstanding year, great finish. But I want to comment on Adam Liddell and what a class kid and what a class statement he made there at the end. He just lost the state championship game. He wanted to congratulate his teammate, Alex Cook, and what a positive kid to come on and have the, uh, the uh, maturity and the uh, charisma to say what he said. To me, that's what the tournament and participation in high school athletics is all about. Absolutely. Boy. In the last 45 seconds or so, recapping the winners from Class A today, Lafayette Central Catholic over Southwestern. And there you see the finals, 68-64. The 2A champ was Cass, a nine-point victory over Forest Park. In 3A, Fort Wayne Elmhurst, a loser to Indianapolis Bishop Chittard, 78-44. And then finally, in the 4A championship, you saw Pike win, 65-54. Dave Nicholson, great working with you. Thanks for all your help. Same to you, Craig. It's been outstanding. Been a great day of high school basketball. Thank and you. It, it has been. And our thanks to Jerry Baker of the IHSAA. Of course, our commissioner, Blake Ress. Mark Higdon from Associated Sports. Our producer, director, Sean Humphrey. Dave West directing as well. For my buddy, Bob Nagel. Craig Wallen. Until next time. So long, everybody.